Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to talk about Hieroglyphus banyan, which is also commonly known as the rice grasshopper or Kharif grasshopper. This video is the first part of the series on pests of rice. In the second part, I will talk about Leptocoryza vericornis or rice gandiba, and in the third part, I will talk about Dicladispa armigera or rice hespa. But why are we going to study three pests of rice? Let's first see the importance of rice. Rice or Oryza sativa is one of the most important cereal crops. It serves as the staple food for roughly half of the world's population. Particularly, the people in Asia depend on rice as their main food. Rice belongs to family Poaceae, which also includes plants like wheat, sugarcane, maize, etc. Let's look at this uh, distribution map of rice cultivation. You can see that rice is cultivated in many parts of the world and India is one of the major producers of rice. Many people in India, particularly the people in the east and south, depend on rice as their main food. So, let's first talk about Hieroglyphus banyan, which is commonly known as rice grasshopper or Kharif grasshopper. We will discuss its biology and we will see how it damages rice. Like we do for all pests, we will talk about its systematic position or taxonomic status, identification and distribution, habits, life cycle, nature of damage and control. So let's start with systematic position or taxonomic status. Hieroglyphus banyan belongs to phylum Arthropoda, subphylum Uniremia, class Insecta, subclass Pterygota, division Exopterygota, order Orthoptera, family Acrididae, genus Hieroglyphus and species Hieroglyphus banyan. If you have seen my video on order Orthoptera, you already know which ones are the grasshoppers and the characters of grasshoppers. So Hieroglyphus banyan is a common grasshopper which is a pest of rice. Now how can we identify Hieroglyphus banyan? The adults are green with three transverse dark lines on the pronotum of the thorax or the prothorax. So you can see this shield like pronotum which covers the prothorax right and on this pronotum you can see three dark bands three transverse dark brands, which is the most important identifying feature of Hieroglyphus banyan. The females are a little larger than the males. They measure up to 35 to 54 millimeters long and the males are 28 to 40 millimeters long. The young nymph is yellow with many reddish brown spots, but it becomes green as it grows. Both have long hind legs for hopping. Now, where is Hieroglyphus banyan found? You can see that Hieroglyphus banyan's distribution is mainly restricted in Southeast Asia. So, the countries in Southeast Asia which are known for rice cultivation also see this pest, Hieroglyphus banyan. Let's learn about its habits. It is a major pest of rice, but that does not mean that it attacks only rice. It is also a pest for maize, shorgam, sugarcane, pearl millet, peas, pigeon peas, etc. So, it, if rice is not available, then it can survive on any of these host plants. Feeding is vigorous. Like most grasshoppers, it feeds a lot. And on many maize plants, when it attacks, it can be reduced to just bare stems. Plant growth is arrested and the stems become thin. So let's just look at a picture how Hieroglyphus banyan can damage rice plants or any alternate host plants. You can see that when this pest attack happens, the pest feeds on the parts of the leaf and the leaf just leaves the main stem. Okay, many, I mean most of the soft parts of the leaf is gone because of the attack of Hieroglyphus banyan. So, both young and adult stages feed upon the leaves and shoots of paddy. They also cut off the ear heads. Uh, I'll just show you a picture how it can feed on the ear heads as well. 
The leaves are completely eaten by nymphs and adults. You can see here how large chunks of leaves are missing, leaving the midrib and stalk. In the year head stage, the adults attack the ears, nibble at the tender florets or gnaw into the base of the stalks, leading to the formation of white ears. So basically, they feed on these parts. This is the ear head of rice. And when they feed on the rice, then only the husk of the rice is left. And that character is known as the white ear head. Now, Hieroglyphus banyan causes serious damage to its host crops. 10 to 30 percent of the production can be lost due to the attack of Hieroglyphus banyan, particularly to rice, jowar, bajra, maize, and sugarcane. Crop damage by early stages of the pest is hardly visible because when the nymphs are really small, they feed in very small quantities and then you cannot identify the attack of the pest. But as the nymphs grow older, they start to feed more voraciously and then you can see chunks of the leaves missing and sometimes if the infestation is uh, very heavy then most of the leaves will be gone from the field so obviously hieroglyphus banyan attack is on during serious infestation the majority of plants do not produce any grains because if the leaves are gone then obviously photosynthesis is hindered the plant growth is hampered and the plant cannot produce rice. As well as direct damage by feeding, the grasshoppers also attack in indirect ways. The grasshoppers, as they live and feed on the plants, they also defecate on the plants and their fecal matter accumulates on the leaves and on the ear heads. As that happens, the fecal matter attracts fungal growth. And when fungal growth happens on the leaves and the, the ear heads, then those plants become even unfit for feed as cattle. Okay, So, not only we are losing the crop, but also the plants cannot be used as food for cattle because the plants are attacked by fungal growth. Now, let us look at its life cycle. In any orthopteran insect's life cycle, you can see three stages. The adult stage, the female would lay the eggs, then the eggs would hatch and will become the nymphs, and the nymphs will go through certain molting stages and it will again become the adult. Now, if we put that scheme in the life cycle of Hieroglyphus banyan, we can see that the eggs are laid in soil. Many grasshoppers actually lay their eggs in soil. The nymphs first hatch into the soil and as they grow older, they move to the plants and they start feeding there. Now, the nymphs will take about two and a half to three months to become the adults. There will be only one generation per year. Now, as I said that the females lay their eggs in soil, this field bunds or the boundaries of the rice field, they become their favorite places to lay their eggs. Because if you know anything about rice cultivation, you would know that rice cultivation requires a lot of water. So, in the field, there is a lot of water that is accumulated or that is supplied to the field for the growth of rice. So, the females cannot lay their eggs in the water. They need dry soil. And why? where are they going to get the dry soil? In this field buns or the boundaries. Because these are elevated areas and these areas basically are used to stop the water from, fl uh, from flowing away from the field. So, these areas remain dry and if there is any mound of soil in the field then that also remains dry and those are the areas which are favorite for the females to lay their eggs. Now when it comes to controlling this pest we need to keep that in mind. As the majority of eggs are laid in soil in uncultivated areas or on buns and mounds with the cultivated area the uncultivated area should be reduced as much as possible because wherever there is cultivated area, there you would see stored water and in water, Hieroglyphus banyan would not lay their eggs. So, we should 
reduce the uncultivated area around the cultivated area. There should be plants or something uh, which should stop the females from laying their eggs there. Particular attention should be paid to level down all the stray mounds in the fields because mounds are generally kept dry and that becomes a favorable spot for laying eggs. Mechanical disturbance of the soil in which the hieroglyphus banyan eggs have been laid greatly reduces the chances of successful emergence of nymphs. So, if there is a mechanical disturbance of the soil, then the, the eggs in the soil would die or it would be exposed to sunlight and that would also kill the eggs. And if there are small nymphs in the soil, mechanical disturbance also kills them. Hence, before the monsoon begins, the buns could be scraped to a depth of about 15 cm and reformed. Plowing the soil to expose the egg masses to predatory birds is also advisable to control the hieroglyphus banyan attack. Now, let's talk about chemical control because if there is a huge field, then mechanical or cultural control may not be feasible. Now, nymphs of hieroglyphus banyan emerge from the soil about one week after the onset of monsoon. During this period, the egg infested areas can be treated with persistent insecticides which kill the emerging nymphs. Now, which ones are the persistent insecticides? Organochlorines are persistent insecticides which remain in the environment for a long time unlike organophosphates because organophosphates degrade very easily or carbamates also degrade very easily. But organochlorine uh, kind of insecticides, they persist in nature for a long time and they can be used to kill the emerging nymphs. But you might know that most organochlorines are banned from use. The nymphs remain in the area where they emerge from for about two weeks after emergence. This period should be utilized for direct application of insecticides. As the nymphs just come out or as the nymphs hatch from the eggs, they are still very small and at that time they are more prone to the attack of insecticides. So if you apply insecticides at that time, then nymphs can be killed. In the cultivated area, this operation should be carried out only along the buns where the nymphs are concentrated instead of treating the whole field. The uncultivated areas in the vicinity of the cultivated fields should also be treated. So, since the eggs are laid in the soil and the nymphs as they come out, they also remain in the soil for the first two weeks, it makes more sense to apply insecticides in those dry areas. So, there is no point of wasting the insecticides or damaging the plants by spraying the insecticides in the field. Dusting the plants with 5% carbaryl or 5% malathion is also effective. These are not non-persistent insecticides. Okay, so these can be used on the plants. Now, IPM is always the best strategy for pest control. Why? Because in IPM, you use the least amount of chemical pesticides or you avoid using chemical pesticides, right? So, you use the cultural manipulation or biological control or if it is extremely important, then only you take chemical control, okay? So, you use multiple types of control and you use them together and that is known as IPM or Integrated Pest Management. In the development of Integrated Pest Management Strategies for this polyphagous pest, polyphagous means the pest which feeds on many different plants. Okay, And as you saw that hieroglyphus banyan not only attacks rice but it also has alternate host plants like maize, sugarcane or uh, other such poesy plants. Right? So, for this polyphagous pest different control tactics may be combined to suppress the numbers below a threshold level. Now, control strategies which have been evaluated for IPM 
include cultural manipulation of the crop and its environment that is destroying the eggs by plowing the field or by plowing the bund areas then biological control including the use of microbial preparations sex pheromones and also use of chemical control now let's recap the whole uh, lecture the systematic position or taxonomic status of hieroglyphus banial it belongs to order orthoptera and family acrididae genus is hieroglyphus species is hieroglyphus banial for identification we should look at the green color and three black transverse bands on the pronotum or the shield like sclerite on the prothorax now distribution you can see that it is distributed only in southeast asia so it is restricted in southeast asia habits both names and adults damage the crop if we talk about the life cycle it has the egg nymph and adult stages it usually has just one generation per year how does it damage the crop both nymphs and adults feed on leaves and grains of rice you can control hieroglyphus banian by using cultural control biological control or chemical control or you can integrate different types of controls and keep the chemical control to a minimum level by using integrated pest management hope you like this video please come back for my next video on leptocoriza vericornis thank you